Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is my first video, so bear with me. Um, today I'm gonna be showing you how to make my latest pattern, the rosemary beanie, because it looks like sprigs of rosemary, see. So, for this pattern, you will need either one skein of Malabrigo Mecca. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this one. Two skeins of this yarn. <laughs> Apparently it translates to Little Ship. And if I can figure out how to do it, I will link below to the um, video that I tried to learn how to pronounce it from. She has great pronunciation, so the stonewashed XL, which is what this is. This is just in the white, which I thought might be easier for us to see. A um, few other tools you'll need are a scissors, tapestry needle. You'll need a nine millimeter. No, not nine millimeter, US nine, 5.5 millimeter circular, 16 inch circular knitting needle. And I use this nifty interchangeable kit from Takumi, from Clover, Taku, Taku, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, from them. Um, oh, and this is my other nine. So I have an eight on there instead. This one got chewed by a puppy, whoopsies. Um, and then you'll also need size 10 and a, US 10 and a half. Uh, US 10 and a half or a 6.5 millimeter. 16 inch circular needle for this pattern. Now, if you'd like, um, you will you will be able to purchase this pattern on my Etsy and my Ravelry, and I will link to those to that below if you'd like a printout on um, something to look at, written instructions and um, written out what materials are needed to make this hat. But without further ado, let's get started. So to start off, we're gonna do the long tail cast on method with our US 9 5.5 millimeter needles. And I just kind of estimate how much I need. I never really measure anything specific, but, and I'm bad at, estimate, at, at estimating what the length would be and what I do, so. You can start without a slip knot. Some people do, I like to start with a slip knot because it just makes it more secure for me and I end up dropping that one off at the end anyway. So then you wanna cast on 63 stitches and I'll do a couple slow ones so you can see how I do that. So I hold the the end that's, the end that's coming from the ball, I hold around my pointer and then the end that does it, that is goes to an end, I hold on my thumb. And then you just, just like that, that's how we, and I count, well, I cast on 63, um, I actually cast on 64, I guess, because I always drop this last one. So I count this one as one. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. You set the cast on, it'll look something like this. You just want to make sure that you don't have any of your stitches twisted. And then what I like to do is 
for joining is I like to pull this one, the, the first cast on stitch over to the right hand needle and then I pull the last cast on stitch over and drop it off. Almost like a cast off of that last stitch. And then it's joined. And then you wanna place your marker, which can be anything really. I typically end up using hair ties because I do daycare, I have a daughter. Hair ties are easy to come by and I forget to have stitch markers. But there's so many cute ones though, I feel like I should get some, make some. Whatever, okay, so now starting the brim. It's just gonna be a knit two purl one rib for 10 rows. So knit one, two, purl one. Knit two, purl one. Knit two, purl one, knit two, purl one. I'm gonna show what that looks like if you were English style knitter. Since I can do both, you'll knit two, and then purl one. Knit two, purl one. Knit two, purl one. And then just continue that all along the row. Well, Continue that for 10 rows, all along the row for 10 rows. So 